Um, I think the last time we talked to you, you weren't able to talk about the the portal guys, the transfers, and I, now now you can. Um, heck, it's easy to say some of these guys' schools <laughs> and there are their names for me, but you got guys in you know from Vandy and I guess BYU and Ohio State and some other places. I, I know you haven't started practice yet, but how how do you feel like those guys are fitting in, and kind of what are your expectations? How do you feel about that portal group overall? Well. First off, uh, I appreciate those guys, you know, coming to Arkansas because they all had many, many options. And there's a lot involved when you're talking about the the transfer portal. Not only do they need to the, – the players need to pick the right school that, you know, really is in need of those positions. Um, but, you know, there's finances involved. And, and in many cases here, um, these guys – you know, they came here and they they could have made more money other places and feel very fortunate that uh, they really evaluated their situation uh, as far as development and just what we have to offer here. And uh, they're going to make a, a big impact on our team. That's what I see so far, you know, not really naming names. I mean, we feel like that we plugged in some some depth, some holes, um, you know, got a couple of couple of experienced starting pitchers uh, to mix in with our really good staff. Um, position player-wise, we brought in a couple infielders and a couple outfielders, maybe maybe three outfielders. And it's, you know, so far so good. But, you know, we got to go out and practice and put them in game situations. And, you know, we don't expect it to be, you know, over the top good, but Guys got to continue to get better. We're we're excited to see what we've got. I guess, I guess Jimenez. Hopefully, I'm saying his name right. What, what, all, what where all do you see him playing? So you're talking about our pitcher. Um, I'm sorry. I, I meant uh, the guy from Vandy, uh, Co Cozell. Am I? Yeah, Cozell. He's a he's a second baseman. Swings bat. Left handed hitter. Really strong. Um, you know, was in and out of the lineup as a freshman. It's hard to do at this level. Um, I see him being a second baseman, and I see him playing a lot. You know, he's got a lot of competition, but uh, you know, we've things always have to be earned everywhere you go. So uh, he's an infielder, and he can also play outfield. Obviously, he can DH, and those are some things he did at Vanderbilt. Would him and Souza compete at second, or was there maybe a possibility to move Souza to first or something or third? Or I think you just said everything that could happen. Souza can move to the outfield. He could play second base. Souza can play shortstop. Souza can play third. Uh, really gifted. Made a jump too. You can see it from our first couple of weeks of you know skill work. Um, really, really playing well right now. It's fun to watch him. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hodge? Yeah, Dave, another one of those transfers you brought in was Aloy's uh, brother from BYU. I know he was mostly a DH out there. I think he played a little bit of first, also listed as an outfielder. Kind of where do you project him uh, playing for y'all? Well, we're going to work him out at first. Uh, you know, DH spot is always that possibility. A um, little, little different body style than his older brother. is just thicker, really strong. Um, if you go off of you know, some of the uh, metrics we've been keeping an eye on. I mean, his exit velocity is the best on the team consistently right now. He hits it hard. Um, you know, he I think he might have hit right in the middle of the order for BYU, hit some home runs, six or seven, maybe more. Uh, thing was, is BYU recruited him as a pitcher, number one, and he didn't hit all fall and went home and they said, you know, we might need you to hit next spring and something along that line came back in the spring. They said, yeah, we need you to hit. So he, he took a lot of time off from uh, hitting and still cracked the lineup. What he is is he's got power and he's got power everywhere. It's right field, center field, left field. Um, we'll see how that works out, but he's still young. He's only a sophomore. And the exciting thing about Kozeel you know, and some of these guys, they're young. You know, they have two years with us at a minimum. So uh, excited to see how it turns out.
and you mentioned bringing in a couple of starters. Uh, you, you got Root, and then you also have uh, Landon Beetlesheese. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. I just call him Landon. That's 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 a good call. Uh, I'm curious, like you know, those are two elite, you know, guys out of transfer portal starting pitchers. You only got three spots in the weekend rotation. You had a bunch of guys coming back from last year's staff. Just how do you convince you know multiple guys like that to to come in and, and pitch for y'all? Well, they want to pitch for Coach Hobbs. Um, they like what they've seen uh, from the development of our younger pitchers, or maybe even a guy like Smith who turned down maybe a million dollars out of high school and got got eight eight million. So um, appreciate those guys because they have some options, many 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 options. Could have gone to our league. We would have had to try to beat them. And, uh, you know, they came in here because they they wanted to be a part of the Arkansas program. And, like I said, be with with Coach Hobbs. And I think they just want to be on a team with, uh, with a great pitching staff. And I think that's that's what we foresee. And one more before I turn it back over. Uh, Robinette, one of your, your guys coming back. You know, how good was it to see him have a as productive of a summer as he has? And do you see him more as a third baseman, first baseman, or kind of where do you project him? I see him. I see him do both. Um, you know, we work him out at third and first. Uh, I think he's really improved at third. Played a lot over there in the summer. All you know, made the All Star team out there. He had a really rough place to play though. He's at Martha's Vineyard. You know, it's tough living over there. But uh, other than that, uh, got to give him credit. He he just keeps getting better. And he went and played. He hit. He hit some home runs. Um, but uh, really excited for him and. And, you know, the experience you gained this summer is definitely, you know, it's already paying off. We can see it. Ellis. Hey, Coach, you guys have had a lot of JUCO guys come in and get drafted, have a lot of success. It seems like Brent Iredale is as high up there and highly regarded as any of them. Just how big of a deal was it to get him to campus? And what have your early impressions have been of him? Yeah, you know, Brent was a guy that, you know, turned down money to come to school here. Obviously, he's put up huge numbers at the junior college level. And, you know, you can say, well, it's junior college, but he still put up the numbers. And he hit. If he's a good defender, he's a big, strong kid. He's got, he's got a lot of power. He can actually really run as well. He's, he's actually his tools are a little better than I thought they would be. I thought we were looking more of a hitting guy, pretty good fielder. I didn't know he could run like he can. He, he throws accurate. Um, yeah, it was. You know, he's one of about five guys that we got through that we didn't think we were going to get him, to be honest with you. And, you know, Justin Thomas is one. And, you know, there's a couple more in there, a couple high school guys. And and then getting Kendall Diggs back. And uh, all of a sudden, it might have got a little crowded, but we got a little better, too. So uh, we'll just let him battle it out. When you think about like your junior class of pitchers, guys like Wood, Fouch, Bybee, and all those guys, they all kind of took a nice little step in their second year. How important is it for your team and just that staff as a whole for those guys to kind of continue that progression and take that next step? Well, I think they're going to do it. You know, you talk about Gage Wood. Hey, had a great summer. Bybee had a good summer. I think these guys, they, you know, with the competition here, going out and playing summer ball, the experience they've gained as freshmen and sophomores, it, it just makes you better uh, physically. They're in great shape and, um, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be counted on. Um, we depend on them to be leaders for us, whether it's on the field or off in the weight room. And, and so far I like what I've seen from these guys. Dudley. It appears Ryder Helfrick had a big guest summer. Talk about him a little bit and just your catchers overall that you've got in this year. Yeah, it was fun watching Ryder play this summer. Um, he's tougher than nails, honestly. Very athletic. He can run. Tremendous arm. He's got power. He proved that this summer with a wood bat. I mean, I watched him play two games um, up in the Cape, and both times I went to watch him play, he didn't catch. He just DH'd it in the three hole because it was kind of an every other day thing, and I didn't need to see him catch. I, I know he can catch but I went and watched some of our other guys as well on those other days. And, uh, um, you know, he's, you know, he's the front runner, obviously. Um, like I said, he brings more than just receiving to the game and calling the game. He, he can really block can control the running game. He can call pitches and deal with our, with our, with our pitchers. And, uh, and then on the offensive side, you're getting a guy that 
made a jump offensively and really started working on some things towards the end of the season and took it into the summer, you know, calmed down his swing a little bit, didn't try to pull everything. And I think he just changed his mindset a little bit. And he had a, he had a great summer. It was fun watching him and then following him throughout the summer. And then, you know, we, we brought in a couple of freshman catchers and then a, a Juco catcher that put up huge numbers offensively. Um, that's Elliot Peterson. And then I guess Zane Becker was the, was the guy that we didn't know if he would make it to school. You know, catchers, high demand, and, um, you know, it's, it's good to see see him walk through the door. And then Carson Willis um, lived here in northwest Arkansas for a while. They lived in South Carolina, and uh, getting him here, you know, gave us two freshmen, a transfer, and a returner. I think it's a good mix. And just kind of switch those guys out, out every other – you know, every other scrimmage probably this summer, or excuse me, this this fall. But looking back on the summer, um, those guys, you know, they they played, they got better, they got stronger, and now they get to handle these pitchers. And uh, it'll be it'll be up to the coaches to really do a good job of developing these young catchers. And uh, you know, hopefully, we'll move forward and just we've been so good back there over the years. I don't I don't see that changing. Appreciate it. Mason. Yeah, Coach, I, I was wondering about Behava. You know, he had such a, a hot offense in the summer. Just what do you think of the way that he really turned things on with the bat? So got to watch him a couple of times this summer as well. And, you know, he, he started – if you go back and you watch video of him when he walked in the door where he had his hands, open stance, big leg kick, you know, this is a guy that hit – 350 at Sac State. Didn't see the pitching he saw here, obviously, from the day he walked in here to, you know, to the time the season was over, um, facing all the SEC arms and then some really good ones out of league play. And he, we, we were talking about just calming it down a little bit. And man, did he, did he make an adjustment this summer from leg kick to, uh, you won't see a whole lot going on there. Uh, you know, I watched his batting practice up there the first day up in, in the Cape, and I got him off to the side, and I videoed it, sent it back. And I said, look, to the other coaches, you know, look, what, look what's going on here. He's, he's, he's made an adjustment, and at the time he was hitting over 300 and hitting home runs. And uh, I talked to him after BP, and I said, hey, I, I love what you're doing. He just stayed through the middle. Hit line drive after line drive. Hit some balls out of the park, dead center, maybe left center, right center. And then in the game, you know, his first at bat, he singles up the middle. Then he lined out to short. It was just uh, taking BP to the game and not trying to do too much. And same guy showed up here, you know, last fall. He's trying to hit, see if he could hit him up there by the picnic benches and BP when they had free rounds. Now it's see if he can ping pong the middle and maybe hit one off the batter's eye and go the other way. It's, it's called hitting and uh, it's been, been a great thing so far. And you guys returned a lot on the pitching staff, but you know, we've talked about some of the guys you added. What does it say about coach Hobbs as a recruiter? And I guess, you know, what have you seen from him as a re recruiter? Well, you know, just, you know, our, our philosophy is we got to get the best high school kids in here and we've done a good job. We've got some really good young arms in here. You know, things are going to change in the future with rosters and, you know, profit sharing and on and on and on. And we don't probably need to get into all that. But uh, we still feel like the portal is a good thing as far as changing your roster, helping your roster. But you can't live in the portal. So, you know, we, we don't want to get more than a couple, three pitchers every year. We want to have enough younger players in the program that are really good, that we can build off of, build around. And that's what we did this summer. That was our plan. Maybe three guys, you know, we were thinking maybe we can get one really good starter with experience. So we brought in a couple, three, we ended up getting a couple, you know, give Zach Root some credit. I mean, he sees that we get Landon. He's got offers from every team in the SEC for the most part. And he still comes to Arkansas. We didn't think we would get him once, once, once Landon, you know, made his commitment and put it out there. But we really wanted him, and uh, 
he turned down some things to come here. So uh, what that says about Coach Hobbs, number one, this kid want to pitch for him. He's got a great reputation as a recruiter and a coach. And, uh, you know, here, there you go. And also, are you guys still planning on playing some outside competition this fall? Yeah, our bye weekend in football, I'm not sure. I don't have dates in front of me. 6th, 7th, 8th of October, whatever that is. Probably see something coming up on that, maybe that Friday night and maybe again on, on Saturday. Uh, you know, we were going to go to Omaha and play in this event up there, us and Nebraska, Oklahoma State and Creighton at the championship ballpark. And we were all invited, and I think it got too big, and they couldn't handle it, and they just they kind of pulled the plug on it. So as of right now, we're going to bring Oklahoma State over here for a couple of games. And Friday's game might be a normal game, nine innings. Saturday might be 10, 11, 12 innings. Because that'll be toward, that'll be maybe be the end of our fall. Just play those couple of games instead of playing a red-white series where we always run out of pitching. And I don't know. We haven't finished it the last couple of years, it seems like. So um that, that'd be the plan right now. You can only have two outside competitions, and that, that would be it unless something changes. Thank you. Tom. Hey, Dave. Uh, from a big big picture perspective, what do you want to see? What do you want to get done this fall? What do you want to come out of, of fall having accomplished? Well, it's kind of like the fall of 21. We've got a lot of new players starting as early as we can, honestly. This is the earliest we could start. I mean, I guess we could start today, and we are. So – couldn't start yesterday. It's a holiday. Um, so we just, we want to see what we have. It gives us a little more time in the off season. There's the 45 day window when that gets over in the middle of October, it gives us a little more time to make some adjustments. Um, just to get our roster, right. You know, we've got a roster right up 50 and turn in a roster of 40 when the season starts, you know, next year, it's going to be even smaller than that. Um, so uh, there's a lot of things we we want to get accomplished. Um, we need to get our infield lined up. We need to figure out who's going to play in that outfield. Um, you know, we've got some – it's going to be a battle out there, and there's some guys that can swing a little bit. Got some defensive guys. You know, we brought Davlin in, uh, really athletic, and Logan Maxwell can flat out hit. and. You know, Justin Thomas is an outstanding defender that's got, you know, some experience in the SEC, went off to junior college, put up big numbers. You know, that's just to name a few. And, uh, you know, we, we need to see them hit our pitching. We want to see about, you know, can these guys run? Can they steal bases? I mean, we've, we've been working a lot on it in the first two weeks. I think if you come out to the watch us work out, you'll see us doing – a few more things than maybe we have in the past working on uh, trying to score runs and be a threat. And that's one reason we went out and got some guys that could do some things. Thanks. Coach and Bob, anything else? I've got a couple more. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned, I think the last time we talked to you that Fouch had come home with an injury. Do you have a, do you have an update on his status? Yeah, he's good to go. He's good to go. You know, he just tweaked something. Um, you know, not an elbow or a shoulder, just a little, little pull kind of on his back. So looks like he's good to go. And if, if we don't throw him this weekend, it's not because cause we're going to scrimmage a couple of times this weekend. But, you know, here it is Tuesday. We're not going to scrimmage till Friday and Saturday. And uh, Friday, we'll I think we'll scrimmage at three o'clock. And then uh, Saturday, we're going to go early at 930. Get as many in as we can uh, before the football game starts. And then uh, Jimenez, I think he missed this past season with an injury. What? What do you know? What the injury was, and is he healthy? Is he good to go? Yeah, he won't be good to go this fall. He's he's. We're wanting him to be good to go in the spring. I mean, he he tweaked his elbow, so he had to get that fixed. And uh, you know, he's big, strong. He would have been their number two or number one pitcher if he would have been healthy and. You know, we're hoping that uh, he can be healthy this year and we can either use him out of the pen or as a starter or if it's not 100%, we'll get him ready for the for, for next year. But he's a, he's a talent. Does that mean he had, the, had Tommy John? Mm -hmm. And then one more guy I wanted to ask about was Carson Bowles. You got him from the D2 ranks. I know you mentioned last time, like, hey, if you can hit, you can hit. Uh, just curious what you saw from him and 
And what made you go after him? Well, basically, he put up incredible numbers. Yeah, it was Division II level. I coached Division II for one year. And I had two two to three guys on my team that were definitely Division I players. And one of them ended up being the MVP of, you know, Division II baseball. And he had about the same numbers, kind of crazy numbers. And uh, he ended up signing a pro contract. But uh, a lot of doubles, hit some homers, big batting average, swung the bat really well. You know, it's batting practice. It's drill work. Got to take it to the game. Um you know, I didn't mention him, an outfielder. We got Brendan Clark's a really good freshman outfielder with a good swing. I mean, it's going to be a fight out there. It's going to be uh, – it's just a good mix of left and right-handed hitting. Um, some with pop, some with more double swings. And uh, just want, you know, before the smoke clears in the spring, just like to have nine deep that when you go through our lineup, you're going to have to work for outs. And that's that's what we're really fighting for this fall. All right, Bob, close it out. Yeah, Dave, I had a, a, a maybe off topic about <clears throat> a couple of your major leaguers. Um, obviously, Andrew Benintendi and Dominic Fletcher, I mean, they're they're in the big leagues. They're getting paid great, all that. But they're playing for the White Sox, and uh, Andrew's probably their best hitter. Um, just a historically bad team. Uh, do, do you stay in touch with those guys? And if so, I'm just curious what the interaction is like. You tell me, hey, keep your chin up, you're a major leaguer. Uh, just wonder what your thoughts were on that. I mean, the te it's mostly through texting, but I don't I don't give them any of those type of speeches. Like you said, they're big leaguers. It's 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 a job, and they show up. They want to have success. Uh, yeah, they're playing on a team doesn't win much, and they're kind of changing some things up. They just, you know, what do you do? You just you play. They play 162 games. They I think they tied a record for losses in a row this summer. So uh, you got to change a little bit. You got to you know, be one of the leaders, fight to change the culture a little bit. And I'm sure uh, it'll be an interesting all season for the White Sox. And, you know, Hagan, he might, he might be up there next year. He might be their, their ace or something. I, uh, how fast do you think he can maybe get to the big leagues and help them out? Probably about as fast as they want to take him. I mean, they bring him up there now if they want to let him get some experience. But I think what they'll do is they'll, they'll wait till next year and see if he's healthy and has a good spring training and, you know, for Hagen too, I, I think that he would like to have a little time in the minors, being around the guys that are in the organization, kind of show people what he can do and that, you know, he's, he's that guy. He's not going to go around telling everybody how good he is. He's going to show you, um, make it a little bit easier, uh, go out and have good spring training and in an earned spot. I think that'd be the route I would if I was their GM, but I'm not. Um, but he, he's got big league stuff now. I think they actually broke the Orioles' record for consecutive losses. Then they beat the A's. Then they fired their manager. I guess they just wanted to let him get get a win before they fired him. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. yeah anyway, tough, so. you know, I know the Tigers swept them in Chicago, so we we of got the, White the Tigers did. Of course, the Tigers are the best team in baseball. <laughs> that, thanks, Mason. Last one here. Uh, yeah, Coach, I'll, you guys, I guess, gave Zach Root number 33. Does that signify anything or just random? I'll just leave that up to your mind, whatever you want to think there. No, we, uh, I've always had, a, for the most part, I've had, what have I had? A lot of left handed pitchers have worn that. Nick Schmidt. Drew Smiley wear that number? Might have been another one in there. Might have been a couple more. So, let I'll let Bob dig into that, but uh, yeah, it's left-handed pitcher's number in my eyes, and uh, he's left-handed and uh, Landon had already requested number thirty-five, and he got it, and then you know talked to Zach about it, and he kind of he kind of knew that there had been some guys wearing that that were pretty good, so uh, didn't want to throw that on him if he didn't want to handle that and. He was good with it.
Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.